Alright, so we all know that there are different types of iPhones out there in the market. We have the iPhone 6, the iPhone 6X, iPhone 7 and 7X I think, the iPhone 8 and 8 Plus, we have the iPhone 10 and we have the iPhone 11, iPhone 11 Pro and 11 Pro Max. So all these different types of iPhone models comes with different screen sizes. So because of these different screen sizes, it's always very important to keep in mind how every single UI element is going to appear on all screen sizes. So this is why auto sizing and alignment becomes very useful. And the good thing is that auto sizing our elements is actually very easy on a very basic level. So we're going to go ahead and see how to auto size most of the elements that we have on our screen. So the first element we want to auto size will be this view. So I'm going to go to my property window and click on the layout. Alright, so for bigger screen sizes, say for instance the iPhone 11 Pro, we might want to ensure that the left side of our view is properly aligned. So we're going to go ahead and click this and also we want to allow our view to be able to grow sideways and we want it to also grow vertically. So this is the auto sizing we need to do for this view to ensure that everything balances out. So by keeping the auto sizing this way, our view is going to grow proportionately with the left hand side the right hand side, the top and the bottom. Because we want our view to be more aligned to the top, that's why we selected this pin and we neglected this pin because we don't want the view to be aligned to the bottom part. Now the next element that we want to auto size will be this image. So I'm going to select this image and I'm going to go to the property window. I'm going to click on layout. So what I'm going to do here will be to remove all of these pins. The reason is because I want this image to remain exactly where it is even when our app is running on a larger screen. So we want it to always maintain its aspect ratio and also remain in the same place. So I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing for our label. So our label, I'm going to allow it to grow sideways and I want it to remain exactly where it is. So I don't want it to grow in height so that's why I did not select any of this pin. So I just want it to grow horizontally and we don't want it to grow in height. So we are going to go ahead and do the same thing for the email and password test imputes. Alright, so I'm going to select this and I'm going to go to properties. So these pins that we see here are responsible for different things in terms of the alignment and auto sizing, right? So the inner pins are responsible for the growth that the UI element will receive in its height and width. So if I select the vertical pin, it means that I want my element to grow in height in respect to the size of the screen where we are running the app. So for instance, you can see that we are making our design using iPhone 8 Plus, which is a smaller screen compared to the iPhone 11 Pro. So what happens here is that when we select this pin, it means that we want our email test field to grow proportionately with the screen size of the iPhone 11 Pro. And also, I want it to grow proportionately as well in terms of width. And I want to align the width both to the left and to the right. So I don't want to align it to the top. So this will do. So we're going to go ahead and use the same alignment for our password test field. So here I'm going to send a password. I'm going to align to the left, so I'm going to grow the width and grow the height and align to the right as well. So I'm going to do the same thing for our login button and also we're going to do the same thing for our click to register test field. All right. Now to confirm that everything works, I'm going to go ahead and run this on the emulator so that we can now see the difference. And bam! So as you can see, this looks more like our completed project. So this is exactly how useful the auto sizing is. So I think there is a few touches that we need to do. So we need to increase the height of this view so that it will cover up to this point. So let's go ahead and do that. So I also want to call our attention to some of the errors that Visual Studio 2019 is actually experiencing in terms of designing with the storyboard sometimes the color tends to you know dissipate or disappear so this is actually an error that can be taken care of all right so how to actually fix that is by going to your widget 
it's more like a walk around so I'm gonna select um, a different color so the color comes back I can go back and set the color back to color primary so doing this to resolve the color issue it's always very useful if you don't resolve it then your storyboards might actually have some errors that only this change in colors can resolve so it's actually an issue that we expect that it fix eventually now the last thing we want to do will be to edit our primary color so i want the color to be a little bit darker so i'm going to go to solution explorer so i'm going to change our color primary to something darker Right, so this seems much better. All right. So now to confirm that everything is in order, let's go ahead and run the app again for the last time. Okay, so as you can see, the space that we have on top of our view is now covered. So everything is now in order. Now in the next lecture, we're going to go ahead and design our registration page. So see you in the next class.